So the 49ers trade up at the third round, which means they love this player. We saw him trade back and take a second rounder. They trade up, pick 86 in the third round. They give up a third and fourth. And who are they going to take? Because, again, when the team trades up, they love somebody. Tackle, Dominique Pooney out of Kansas. This is an ant pick. O-line versatility. All of you O-line haters, you got what you wanted. Ant, walk us through this dude's game because he could play a lot of spots. Yeah, so he's a five position guy. I mean, that's he's a, he played left tackle at Kansas. He's got all the ability in the world, uh, but he translates more to interior offensive line in the NFL. This is where you're getting your value. A lot of people see that he has guard next to his name on most of the breakdowns, but this is a center prospect. I'd be surprised if they actually put him at guard. I think he's an eventual center. You watch his senior bowl, he handled himself well on the inside. He's able to handle the quicker defensive tackles, but also able to anchor against the strongest, stronger defensive tackles. He moves well in space. He's a very intelligent, instinctive player, good technique, good hands. I mocked him in my first mock draft at, at pick 94 to the 49ers. I love this pick. He's been my guy for a while. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited. Actually, two of my guys go back-to-back, -back, Renardo Green and now uh, Dominic Puny. I freaking love it, man. What do you think, Rob? You got old line. This is what all know. the fans wanted. Now everybody can, can, can shut up. No, they I mean, will not. They will uh, not. I, I, I had heard a lot about this guy as being kind of one of those fringe, like second tier players that, uh, that a lot of the prospects liked a lot. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where he's going to fit in, but I think at this point, it, it, it's the same reason they went corner. Like you've got a bunch of guys who are on one have one year left of their deal or on one year deals. And you've just got to start reinforcing the position, bracing with the fact that you're not going to be able to pay everybody. And you're certainly, I mean, at, at some point, whether he's playing guard, whether he's playing center, whether he's playing tackle, he can plug in at all three spots for the 49ers in the future. Cause none of it is solidified. That's kind of my biggest thing with the offensive line. It was the same thing. We talked about receivers. Receivers were kind of the same way next year. What's that group going to look like? cornerbacks what next year what's that gonna what's that group gonna look like offensive line next year what's that group gonna look like so wherever he earns a job you know again you and i kept i kept banging the table draft guys that have a clear path toward a starting role and fits the bill and i think it's wide receiver good wide receiver class corner good corner class in this draft offensive line good offensive line class and so far the 49ers have taken advantage of all three of them yeah, you know, my write up six five three thirteen. Um, huge hands, ten and one eighth inch hands. He's got shorter arms, Colt McKivitt's style arms. So like you can't he's got the same length of arms as McKivitt, so you can't eliminate right tackle, left tackle, you can for sure. Uh, but I mean they're small he's he's an interior guy who could play outside. Really good size of metrics for a guard prospect, could play sitter, uh played a lot of left tackle, but lack of arm length. And lack of mobi mobility will keep him inside. I thought gap scheme, like that was kind of like pin pull. So inside zone, that's what he's going to excel at. Outside zone, be a little bit of a stretch for him. Um, sometimes his tape says he can play tackle, but then the very next play says no way. Inconsistent. Remind me a lot of Jalen Moore. Uh, very similar, uh, where the footwork just needed coaching up. But he's going to be 24 years old as a rookie. Um, likes to pull and block in space but has no acceleration. He's, he's a cartoon run run guy where he like runs in place and then he gets going. Uh, but once he gets, pulled, <laughs> he's effective. Um, plays so tall for a six, a six, five guy. Like I, he's a waist bender, not a knee bender. I didn't like that. Um, let's see once he's moving really, really good. And so again, you look at how many games this dude has played 47 games played. Transferred from Central Missouri, went to Kansas. Again, just off the top of my head, I could be wrong on these numbers, okay? Ricky Pearsall, 55 college games played. That's nuts. You look at our second-round guy, 53 games played for Renardo Green, 47 games played. This is the Trey Lance after effect where it's like, look, we want a sample size, and we want somebody that's played through a lot of football, um, and they, he fits the bill there. Is this a ceiling play? No, but it's a versatility offensive line play, and there's going to be some tough de decisions in that room because if you put him at guard, 
listen to the guards right now. I mean, you usually keep three interior offensive linemen, um, you know, on your active roster, and you'll call one up just at the guard position. Feliciano, Banks, Burford, Barch, Pooney. That's five just guards. You can't carry that. So, like, somebody's got to kind of move back. You're keeping a third-round pick. He's making the roster. You traded up for him. So, Rob, kind of what are your thoughts there on that guard room? Like, what's that look like now? You know, I'm just I'm just looking around. That was um, that was Daniel Jeremiah's 66th-ranked player. Uh, Matt Miller said he was his number 76th-ranked player. So, the 49ers are actually getting ahead of the consensus value on this one. Brooklyn had a second-round pick on him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and everybody knows that he's – I mean, that's like the, one of the draft Bibles right there, man. The beast. But I don't know, man. It, it really depends on how the 49ers see him. We really, we aren't, in, we aren't in that room. We, they could still see him as a tackle. We, you know, everybody values these guys differently. Um, John Feliciano, one year deal. Aaron Banks, last year of his deal. Jake Brendel, I don't know if you're going to kick him all the way inside the center, puny, um, but could easily be upgraded on. I don't necessarily think. You need to have the answer right now, but this is a pick. He's a third rounder. Somebody just got put on notice. Like you don't draft this guy. You don't trade up for him for him to just kind of develop. Could he? And would anybody bat an eye? No. And the 49ers have this weird rotating guard thing that they like to do or that. I mean, maybe they're onto something. People rotate defensive linemen. Maybe they kind of like it. I like it. (laughs) You know, maybe they're onto something, but. I mean, trading up and picking him there tells me the 49ers think he could get in right now. Now, who is he Who is he replacing? I don't know. Aaron Banks is solid, but is, are we thinking Puny's more of a right side guy? Right, Either right guard or, uh, or right tackle? He's where? played oh, – here we go. I'll break down his starts. Yeah, where, where, where's his favorite? 27 left tackle. Uh, what's, he's not playing there. 13 left guard, three right tackle. So it, and you know this more than most. Switching from the left to the right side is a bigger ask than switching to tackle the guard. So where do you kind of slot him in kind of long term? Left guard, right guard? Where do you start him off at? If you had your choice, screw the roster. What's this guy best slated to play in your opinion, Ant? Where do you put him? I'd put him at left guard. He's already got the uh, played left tackle, moving in one spot. Made sense. Now at the senior bowl, he played right guard. Uh, and center when he when he went through his reps so but I think left guard would make the most sense and you've got Aaron Banks has been dealing with injury concerns Spencer Burford and Feliciano right guards uh, they've been doing that all last year I, I think left would make the most sense and you want to start working this guy in to potentially get center reps because if John Feliciano is starting at right guard you need a solid backup center Nick Sakel hasn't worked out and also, Ben Barch, we don't know exactly how good he is. This guy is better than both of those guys. So now you have real position versatility on the inside. But I'd start him at left because he's got the familiarity with playing the left side already and uh, just see how he translates to playing guard. And then, of course, that's when you start moving people in uh, through time. And just a question to pose. How good is how good is everybody feel Aaron Banks is? How secure is his job even this year? There's two Aaron Banks. There's Aaron Banks pre-injury, and there's Aaron Banks post. You look at the first three games of this year before he got turf toe the first time. He got twice this year. I thought Pro Bowl level of play. I mean, I thought he was awesome. And so do you dock a guy because he played through an injury and is, you know, I, I I don't know. And so I think that this is a pick that says, look, Aaron Banks, you either go out and you show us what you were healthy or you, you lose that. Um, and, again, I mean – Listen to me, whatever I say. I'm not saying Pooney can't make this roster. He's making the roster. They traded up for him. They love this dude. And somebody, I'm sure somebody's like, yeah, talk about Cameron Latu last year, third-round pick. That dude got stashed on ice. I mean, it's possible, but he's going to fit. And so if you're going to start him at left guard, you just kind of see. Maybe get him some work at center. Here's the thing. Listen, to, I rated his traits or whatever uh, for a guard. I rated him as a guard. IQ 7. Length nine, athleticism seven, hands six. I thought that was his worst trait. I plays with his shoulder pads a lot. A lot of shoulder pad contact, which I didn't like. But if you move him inside, that's not as much an issue. Anchor ability eight. Bull rushers, I thought he was at his best against. Did you see the same thing, Ant? This kind of like he had a lot of sand in his pants. Like he wasn't being pushed back. So from a Purdy standpoint, if you're moving him inside, 
you're kind of helping that getting blown back to Jake Brindle. All the other guards are kind of good against it. You know, Banks, he's got a good anchor. I feel like Feliciano's got a great anchor. Brindle, no anchor. Um, I don't know. If you put him at center, that gives you three good anchors, but I'm not sure that's what they want to do. I, I don't know. What's going through your head, Ant? Yeah, I mean, that's part of the game that I really liked is when there's contact, he holds up. Is he the most athletic guy to be able to hold up against edge defenders? I'm not sure he is. Uh, but I think inside against the defensive linemen who are less athletic defensive tackles, I think he's going to be better there. The strong, big physical hands help him stop initial contact. And then he anchors really well. And he moves good enough in space to get to the second level. Is he one of those guys that you can Mike McGlinchey put at right tackle and run him out to the second level? I don't think so. But interior-wise, I think he's got enough juice to be able to do it. That's why I like him as an interior prospect. And that's when I started evaluating. I was like, okay, this guy – it's got potential. I kind of thought that Graham Barton was your first round guy that really did that. And Dominic Puny was your third round guy that really did that. And that's why the 49ers went and got him. And I like him. I, I like him a lot. And uh, this is probably my, even though Renardo Green's from Florida State, this is probably my favorite pick of the draft so far. Ooh, I, I like that. I like that. Um, now, let me share. I want to share my screen if I'm smart enough to figure this out. Uh, I, I went to college one time. Um, here's the spider chart of Dominic Puny from mockdraftable.com. This is measuring him against other offensive guards only. And you can see very clearly he shows up, you know, weight is his lowest. And so that could be a concern. But again, the tape, the anchor ability is pretty, it's spot on. I love that. And we saw it at tackle. You're going to be able to see it just fine uh, on the interior as well. Now you look at the players that he kind of matches up with. Um, Ben Nichols, are you kidding me? That's awesome. Uh, you love to see uh, Lucas Nix. All right. So not like a lot of main names on there, but you switch some stuff around. Interior offensive lineman, Zane Beatles. Yeah, that was a Niners guy. You know what I mean? Like, there's some uh -huh. fits there. And so you see some of the carryover. Joshua Jones out of Houston. Eugene Monroe. Like, there, there's some things there. But the metrics, I like. And I, I think that... Like you said, Graham, this is a poor man's Graham Barton. And, and I know some people don't like that tag or whatever, but Graham Barton light, whatever you want to call it, with a lot of experience, a lot of playing time, uh, football family. I, I don't know. I'm curious to see what they're going to talk about when they talk about him, if they're going to say versatility 15 times or if they're going to say tackle or guard. Uh, I mean, I was, I was just reading what Matt Miller had to say right now. He said his number 76 overall player on his board. Puny is a plug-and-play starter at guard who had experience at tackle in college. 49ers right side of the offensive line has been an issue with no notable long-term answers at any position from center to right tackle. And obviously we can throw, we know we can throw left guard into that mix too because Aaron Banks is on one year left. Puny should get every chance to be the team's week one starting right guard, but could even get looks at the right ta at right tackle if the team likes his transition there. So I think Feliciano's our best second best player for sure on the all line. I think it goes Trent Feliciano. Maybe you kick Feliciano inside, put him at center, but he's done it. And you put him at right guard. Now that's, you talk about getting your best five. You talk about getting your best five. Now, John Chapman just got excited. You, you mean to tell me there's a possibility Jake Brindle won't be out there. And I like Jake Brindle, but let's just be honest. Like that lowers the run Shanahan, everything. I, I don't know. I would not be, I'll sign up for that right now. Am I crazy? Does anybody else think that that's a decent idea? Get your best five out there, Feliciano at center, and oh, yeah. Anytime you can get your best five out there, that's what's important. Uh, we've heard you know a lot of times Coach Furster talk about the fact that Feliciano's best position is center. Uh, so if you do have a situation where he could beat out Jake Brendel, he's second year in the system. It's not that weird. We had a rookie start at guard when it came to Spencer Burford. And now it wasn't supposed to be that way. It was supposed to be Daniel Brunskill. But what do we talk about with Daniel Brunskill? A guy with versatility, guess what? Dominic Puny is a Daniel Brunskill type of player. Uh, so you're getting that versatility. First or loves these guys. And I think this guy's got more anchor than a lot of the other guys, though, that we've talked about. Zakel can't anchor like this. Barge can't anchor like this. Uh, so you're getting a guy, like you said, now we're not going to get that pocket movement Nobody getting right on top of Brock Purdy. That's going to give him more ability to step into his throws and make plays down the field. 
it, this is the kind of guy you want to get, and it's a solid pick in, in round three. Yeah, here's the things that make people happy, okay? What's the job of the offensive line? What are we doing? We're trying to protect Brock Purdy. We want to improve in the run game. Zero sacks allowed the last two years. Not only zero sacks allowed, in 2024, zero quarterback hits allowed. Now, Kansas' offense was weird. Uh, you know, they had the two quarterbacks, and some of it was an RPO type whatever, so that's weird. But but look at his grades, okay? I'm not the biggest PFF guy, but a 90.5 pass blocking grade. Like, from the left tackle position, ladies and gentlemen. So now you kick him inside. You just heard Ant say anchoring's there. I think Matt Miller in his write-up said anchoring's there. I saw anchoring was there. Like, this is fun. This is a fun pick. I really think, again, fit. Somebody mentioned in the chat, all three players are five-plus-year uh, guys. They use the COVID, and they use the red shirt. So you're, you're talking about guys that have the experience. It's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive what they've done. Um 49ers are they... drafting all kinds of Brock Purdy's at different positions. It's just guys that have played a shish ton of football. And, you know, one thing you could throw into the mix, too, John Feliciano has played center before. So if, if that's what you, I want, if you like, yeah, if, if you, I thought you were talking about puny at center, but yeah, if you went John Feliciano at center, puny at left guard, then Feliciano at right, like there's so many different little combinations that that center three could kind of rotate to. And I think probably any combination you come up with will be better than what the 49ers had out there last year. Uh, the, the only question thing with center is there's so much schematic elements that Kyle Shanahan places on that plate. Do you want a rookie doing that? Maybe you do. Maybe you want to throw him right into the fire, but I wouldn't expect Shanahan to do that. He's always kind yeah. of put a little bit more weight and a little bit more responsibility on the center. And I wouldn't necessarily see him throwing somebody to that fire right away, but man, I'm, yeah, I like I'm that. pretty sure there's all kinds of combinations they could come up with that are going to maybe not, not let the best defensive lineman, one of the best defensive linemen in the NFL come through on block, you know, hoping to avoid that. <laughs> That would be nice. That would be nice. Now, I will say this, too, and I think it's important. We always hear this, oh, Shanahan's stubborn. Shanahan doesn't change. Shanahan doesn't adjust. You look at these picks, this is very new because you're drafting these old players, 23, 23, 24 years old. Like, I don't know. I feel like there's been three adjustments in the philosophy of the early drafting of the 49ers. The first one was Reuben Foster. With the character issues, you trade it up, whatever else. They cut that dude the day before a game. They haven't really drafted any character issues since that point. The second inflection point was Javon Kinlaw. Swap out Buckner, you know, all that different, whatever. The injuries and the knee, they said, you know what? Health history from here on out. And the third one was Trey Lance. You trade it up, you gambled on the upside, but you had such little tape, and it didn't work out. And so now you look at who they've drafted, since Trey Lance, everybody figured out it wasn't working. So much tape, so much experience. A am I crazy in thinking about this, Ant? Or like, am I the only one that this makes sense to, or am I drawing straws here? No, I think so. I, I think they're valuing, you know, the amount of time that these players are playing football. Uh, this is something that they've definitely went to. They want guys with experience. They want guys that have been out there and been through the trials. And it's also the ability to get more tape. You've, you're able to see more improvement through the years. The more they play, the more you can see, the more you can see how consistent they are. Consistency is a real thing in the NFL. You want consistent snaps, not just big-time snaps. It's like Chris Furster talked about, yeah, Spencer Burford has a lot of wow plays, uh, but why do you need wow plays? You don't. You just need someone that can consistently win, play in and play out. And I think that's what they're getting with these three players is consistency and that's ultimately how your better football team is consistent play, play in and play out. I think, I like uh, John, I think, I think they might have uh, – maybe somebody in the 49ers front office just happens to listen to Striking Gold for some weird reason, and they just heard me railing against take these projected players. Like, oh, he's got the traits, he's got the traits, he can do the – you know, we, well, this is the upside. And the, so far the 49ers are taking players – that you almost know exactly what you're going to get. You know, they've removed a lot of the mystery out of it. You can watch a lot of Ricky Pearsall, and you know exactly what he's going to do when he gets onto the football field. Bernardo Green, same exact thing. This pick goes right along with that. It's it's nice to be heard. I No, they're not actually listening to me. 
but it's you know it's, I think that the 49ers may have learned how valuable it could have been Purdy they probably knew this before that though but maybe their value this draft is just get us guys with experience and they might be able to contribute and help us win the big one this year you know like that's what that experience does it allows them to step in now or sooner Dude, I love that. Look at Richard. He says the front office is maturing. I think so. And I'm with you so much, John. Like this has been paramount days, round one, round two, round three. He says, shout out to Coach Ant. He called Dominic Pewdie in one of his last mocks. He said it earlier here. Dude's been on fire. Uh, absolutely incredible. 